Hey folks, cut my hair, cut man, at your services. How are you all? I think we're doing very well. <sighs> These little extras creep in from every corner of the frame, do they not? I've had people asking me, I did a video sitting in this location a while ago. People said, is that a Mad Max Fury Road poster behind you? Well, it is indeed. There they are. It's not a poster. It's one of those great big, and I mean big, cinema front of house standees. I've got many standees here. I spent a long time collecting a load of these things. And unless you've got a massive warehouse, it's very hard to display them. It really is. This comes in two parts. There's one part of it. Other parts down here. You can probably see a, a bit of an M from Mad Max there. But when constructed, it's a huge sort of skewed angle three-dimensional picture of Tom Hardy's Max and uh, Charlie Theron as Furiosa and a rampage and the future belongs to the mad slogan and it's absolutely bloody huge I've never yet erected it because that sounds very dodgy but you know what I mean because it's just too big and unwieldy and I've got Fellowship of the Ring and Two Towers standees which again are too big to actually construct. And I have lots of stuff from Gladiator, as some of the long-standing channel subscribers will know, uh, Gladiator played a huge part uh, in, in my life. And I got a vast collection of stuff, swords, memorabilia, props from the movie, a costume that Mr. Crow did wear. Yes, the entire costume. and. And but some of the standees and some of the things from it, again, they're too colossally big. I have a 40, no, no, I'm lying. I'm, I'm underestimating it. I have a 50 foot long vinyl banner uh, and it's sealed in a wooden box, a massively long wooden box, obviously. Now it's, because it's 50 foot long by about five foot. And what this did, it went round the marquee in Leicester Square, that's what it was. And it's just basically the sort of sandy, pebbly arena landscape with the logo Gladiator across it. Well, I assume it is because obviously I've never really unfailed this entire thing. Because even, you know, the kilted grounds of Kilt Mansion don't stretch that far. Well, they do, but the tenants, you know, they get a bit upset and agitated whenever... You know, the landowner begins to start displaying his goods across the landscape. It makes them very nervous. Anyway, folks, that was a little massively ridiculous preamble before I show you the meat and bones of this video. You can hear some phenomenal Hammer Horror scores playing right now in a bit of a playlist. James Bernard! James Bernard! Which is just what he does for Dracula, Frankenstein. It's very, very similar, samey sort of stuff. But it's brilliant, it's emphatic, it's pronounced, it's deliberate. And it grabs your attention. Right by the earlobes. Now, so, yes, I'm wearing a Bram Stoker's Dracula t-shirt. I have got Hammer t-shirts, but in my trying to put something on to suit the occasion I discovered that those t-shirts were actually now either way too big for me or way too small I have fluctuated in my size over the years bodybuilding wise and just fitness wise I've been huge and I've been streamlined like a racing snake so and they're just either massively gargantuan on me now or they are really absolutely uber uber tight so sadly I can't wear them but hammer and hammers artwork this is the thing what we have here and i've had this for a while and i just thought I'd, I'd, I'd dig it out i've got a few of these coffee table tones you call them you know and this is the revised and updated edition of the art of hammer yes there is a hodgepodge version of dracula 80 1972 there's caroline monroe there now this is a book, posters from the archives of Hammer films by Marcus Hearn. Marcus Hearn. If you're a Hammer fan, you know Marcus Hearn. Or you feel like you do. He contributes to so many DVDs, Blu-ray releases of 
Hammer movies. Commentaries or he, definitely documentaries. He features in a lot of these things. He's a curator for the archives of Hammer movies, Hammer films. Wow, wow. What a guy. What a guy to know. Be wonderful, wonderful. And he's done a, a whole slew of books on Hammer movies, obviously. I think he's part of the Vault of Hammer, which I've got. He, Hammer Glamour. The story of Hammer, the history of Hammer, all this sort of thing. And the art of Hammer is, I just wanted to you know, show you people some of the imagery in this. Because the artwork and the posters that were done for Hammer in its heyday were absolutely groundbreaking. Don't forget, this was in the days of painted poster artwork. Yes. Those glorious images that entranced you as you walked past the cinema. And you walk in, and you're like, my God, look at this, what could it be forthcoming? Look at this, painted on. Not what you got from the late 80s, and certainly throughout the 90s, and even into today, Photoshop. Just floating heads, and the film's title, which is so god-awfully uninventive and uninspiring. It's just, you know, it beggars belief. The likes of the Scream franchise, which I like, I like. But it was just, who were the stars of this one? Just their heads. Da, da, da. And screen two, screen three. Oh. That's just one example. There's so many. Pretty much any movie now. If you see a movie coming out at the cinema, cinemas, remember them? Yeah. And there was some emblazoned artwork. Almost certainly CGI and photoshopped and all that kind of thing. But at least there were some action scenes going on in it. Not just someone's face. Look at the James Bond posters now. It's just Daniel Craig. Like a mean look at his face. A, a revamped, modified Walter PPK. Or whatever. A bit of dust on his tuxedo. His bow tie hanging on loose. You know. And, but nothing. But beyond that, nothing. Whereas in the old days, look at those painted artworks from all the Sean Connery ones. The Lazen Me classic. And Roger Moore. Images from the story. Again, I'm using just another example. But this is how the artwork and the skill of that artist really came together to help market a movie which you were looking forward to. It's just part of the whole package, isn't it? You know, the trailers are great, hopefully. The movie is great, hopefully. But all the memorabilia, the merchandise, the whole hyperbole surrounding it is just magnificent it should be now it's just ten a penny it's cash on delivery it's just completely banal but the hammer movies do you notice that max is now intruding because that was quite good artwork as well i'm not sure who did all this clearly photoshopped and all that but there was a lot of good artwork with it as well the way that it they they, they put it all together it was pretty clever pretty inventive the whole off-kilter angles that you've got here. That looks like I've got it on the wrong angle, but it's not. It's not. The slogans do read this way. So it's all part of this helter-skelter, wild, apocalyptic world. And it works. Anyway, come on. You've wasted almost nine minutes without even showing any hammer art artistry. Apart from this guy here, who you've all seen before in my videos. All about Curse of the Werewolf and the phenomenal mask that was created by Trick or Treat Studios for Oliver Reed as the beast in man. So, there you go. This is a vast coffee table book and all the pages from, I think it's the 1950s to the 70s, the major run of Hammer movies. Hammer existed, albeit in different guises before then, but they weren't particularly well known. We're going to go to 1958 and the notorious camp on Blood Island. Look at this. A torture camp, a prisoner of war camp. The Japanese holding British prisoners. The abuse, the torture, the rampage, the fight back. That poster was actually banned, that one. Showing a grizzled Japanese officer with a samurai sword, a katana, about to behead somebody. You know, and... That was banned, it was too provocative. And if you look at that, there's the American, American one sheet there on that side, where you can see the victim as well. 
This book shows you the, it, predo it, it predominantly shows you the British posters because it's, it's, it, it's a British film industry, it's a British market and so it's showing you mainly the quad posters, the quad crown posters or an Im imagery thereof from what they released but it also has American one sheets and some other foreign variants just to show a bit of variety it's got the comedies like Up the Creek Up the Creek there lovely stuff I will come on to the major major league the big hitters obviously oh in fact straight away I have done the film that changed the face of horror Dracula Dracula as James Bernard would have it Look at that. Listen. There's a Dracula motif there. Christopher Lee. The terrifying lover who died yet lived. I mean, this was an era when posters didn't really show what the film reflected. Or sorry, didn't reflect what the film was going to show you. Kind of gave you the wrong idea, a misinterpretation. And... Um, but Dracula and the Hammer posters began to really try to depict what you would see. You would see a vampire, you would see a mummy, you would see a werewolf. You'd know there'd be pictures of various people. Actually, having said that, the Curse of the Werewolf imagery always showed Leon, this guy, Oliver Reed as the werewolf, holding Yvonne Romain, who, who was actually in the movie playing his mother, who dies giving birth to him. So there's no way on earth that she could ever be in that held by her werewolf lycanthropic son but it, but she was better looking than any other woman in the movie so it just you can see the marketing aspect of that right let's get up some more there's more dracula I, I, obviously in america it was horror of dracula we need cancer frankenstein where is that because that's that's the one that broke the mold where is it Damn these glossy pages. You've got Quatermass here. There's me showing you. There's Quatermass 2. Where is it? Where is Curse of Frankenstein? There we go. God, I had the mask here before, but he didn't want to stay on the table for some reason. He rolled off Curse of Frankenstein. Look at that. It's a beauty. A lot of these were made into stamps by the uh, Royal Mail, and I've got them. I showed you them all. I've done a video on that a while ago. Oh, there is Curse of the Werewolf. Can you see there? Now, if you look below the American one sheets, that's one of the most popular images there, holding Yvonne Romain. Christopher Lee, Terror of the Tongues. You know, a Fu Manchu wannabe sort of thing there. John Stockle was one of the major artists. Look, Bill Wiggins again. Yes, I am reading the names off here. But one of the main guys, the main guys whose name I have forgotten, from like the mid-60s onwards, is... Oh, look at this. Here you go. Kiss of the Vampire. Look at that. Beautiful. Gordy. Decorative, flamboyant, vivid, shows so much. Tom Chantrell, Tom Chantrell. Bear that in mind because I'll forget that in about two or three minutes' time. I love this one as well. The Evil of Frankenstein. That was Hammer's. Hammer finally got the rights to be able. Yeah, I'll show you again. Finally got Piotr's got the rights to uh, the makeup and the look of the Hammer movies. So Kiwi Kingston, wrestler, big dude, Kiwi Kingston, plays Frankenstein's monster in that. It's not a good film, but it's very colourful, very OTT, very chaotic. It's done in a very universal movie style. And it, it works, but it's not a great film at all. But I do love the artwork for that. Shock! 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 <laughs> it enunciates. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Curse the Mummies 2. I reviewed that movie. 
Now, again, there's me saying these films at least represent what you see in the film. Well, in that film, you don't see a mummy that's about 50 feet tall. <laughs> There's a bit of exaggeration going on there. And speaking of mummies and exaggeration and how to get around it with the posters and the artwork, let's look at this. I'll just show you this if you can find it. This was the original The Mummy with Christopher Lee playing The Mummy. There you go, right. Very famous uh, imagery, very famous poster. Look at that. Other versions of it. The British version is on the previous page, I think. As you can see there, the policeman's torch is shining right through Christopher Lee as Caris the mummy. It's shining right through his torso. So, but that was done in advance. Peter Cushing saw that image and thought, hang on a minute, we're misrepresenting what happens. He, he doesn't have a gaping hole through him. So he speaks to the director, Terence Fisher, can we get something in there where we can perhaps put a hole in his chest? Yeah, okay. So he grabs a spear, a harpoon thing, and in the movie, he plunges it through the chest of Carice during one of his many rampages, his many French window explosions of glass and wood and timber, and then strangulations and back-breaking scenes. Um, so it, it kind of, okay, in the mind's eye, oh, that kind of makes sense. He's put a hole in his chest there. But it's just a wonderful imagery. And I think what they were trying to depict there. Now, who did this? I'm just trying to see if it says who did that artwork there. Uh, Bill Wiggins did it. And I think the idea would be that he's just made of, you know, old bandages and papyrus and all that kind of desiccated flesh. There's nothing of him. He has power, yet he's just... A desiccated corpse within that and they're trying to depict that but of course Peter Cushing thought well, that, that doesn't make any sense if he's rampaging around he he's not a big bag of nothing is he we're gonna have to make some substance there we're gonna have to give some justification for that hole hence that particular sequence right let's move on a little bit more Oliver Reed again Paranoiac that's a great film that by the way and again, you've got a really good actor for the part in Oliver Reed. That charismatic yet deranged wild quality to him. He is a beast. Okay, let's see now. We got to the Gorgon there, didn't we? I think I showed you that. Bet Midler. The Manny. Yes, moody, evocative, green, sickly, like Linda Blair has just vomited all over it. Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Kind of abstract, that one, the way it drips with blood. And again, you've got some sickly green creeping in there. Plague of the Zombies, you want green? Plague of the Zombies, one of my favourite horror movies. A wonderful film. I will give it its full kilted treatment at some point. These were the hammer double bills, which, as you can see here, Dracula, Prince of Darkness was on a double bill with, with Plague of the Zombies. And you had the Gorgon with Rasputin, the Mad Monk. No, you didn't. You had the Reptile with Rasputin, the Mad Monk. Which should be, yeah, there you go. There you have the uh, the double bill American one sheet. Can you see that? Rasputin, the Mad Monk, and the Reptile. Wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. Um, I'm try, trying to find some particular ones. We've got time, so worry not. The artwork is, oh, here we go. This is the pivotal one. This is the one that put the likes of Hammer poster artwork as highly collect collectible and very, very rare and expensive when you do come across it. Raquel Welsh, 1 million years BC. Look at that. Isn't it amazing how a skimpily clad, fairly bikinied, gorgeous woman overshadows all the monsters and the action and the volcanoes, in the, which are just diminutive in the background. I'll show you again. The action is there in 
in the image, but she overshadows it all. That was released on a double bill with, uh, with She. Or was it The Vengeance of She? Yeah, She. Uh, which is there. A lovely depiction there. And I have, in fact, just there, I've got a, a copy of that. I'll show you. There you go. That is there. Along with some other great movie imagery. What else have we got? Mummy Shroud, Frankenstein Creative Woman, Crater Mass in the Pit. Look at that, I mean, I, I love the way that the, the lettering, the title is absolutely bloody huge on that. Crater Mass and the Pit. A wonderful movie, such a clever, clever idea. Also known as Five Million Years to Earth, there's the American one sheet for it. Look at that. I like that design as well. Although it does give it a different sort of idea. Five million years to where I mean that conjures up like Ray Harryhausen and twenty million miles to Earth and the Venusian Emir. That sort of cyclopean well then we've got two eyes, but he looks like the Cyclops from Seven Voyage of Sinbad on the rampage in Rome of all places. It's Beth Davis again in the anniversary doing her Snake Plissken impersonation. Yeah. Wonderful, isn't it? Again, I think we're talking Tom Chantrell again. Yes, we are. The Vengeance of She. Slave Girls. There's Martine Beswick. Bond Girl and Hannah Starlet. But also, because of her gypsy, swooning, sultry aggressiveness, always portrayed something more sinister more savage the devil rides out look at this this is some great imagery here there's the american sorry the uh, the british quad the crown quad and there is the american one she's looking very ghastly and ghoulish it's all wonderful stuff isn't it lost continent there's some nice imagery from the lost continent that's a nice spread there look at the colors Absolutely bold, smacking you around the chops. Dracula has risen from the grave. And he doesn't look too happy. Got out the wrong the wrong side of the coffin this morning. Ah, there's my coffee. Look at this. Yeah. Frank, hey, look this. Track it risen from the grave. Look at this one. This is, where's it from? This is a US uh, one sheet for Dracula risen from the grave. That's got to be a re release. Look, she's got two plasters on her throat. Dracula risen from the grave. Obviously. <laughs> That's one hell of a piss take picture, that, isn't it? You know? Moon Zero Two, their Lunar Western, which I have covered. Look at that. Great stuff, great stuff. Ahead of the time there with that. Ooh, here we go. Now there's some artwork which is taken from a poster. Which I think is from Hands of the Ripper. Yeah. So let's, let's see what we've got. We've gone in, we're into the 70s now, as you can see there. That wasn't Hands of the Ripper. That was um, Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. Connected. Taste the blood of Dracula. Oh, very lurid. They are dynamic pictures, aren't they? You know who the stars are, put it that way. There's a lovely one. There's a lovely gothic one there, but, but very vivid. Look at that, Ingrid Pitt. Awesome. Looking very green round the gills, but you know. Obviously hasn't had a claret that day. When Dan's, oh yeah, is it Victoria Petri, I think it is? Oh, Victoria Vetri. From when dinosaurs ruled the air. Look at that. You see? Lovely. The 
beauty is you can freeze the frame as I'm showing you these. If I'm going too quickly, oh, uh, Scars of Dracula and Horror of Frankenstein double bill. Uh, not too bad, quite nasty, quite vivid. Uh, Horror of Dracula, one of the worst films Hammer ever, ever made. I cannot stand it. You've got Dave Prowse in a nappy, for God's sake. Lust for a Vampire. That's quite good. That's quite nice and takes no prisoners. We know what you're getting with that. The Creatures the World Forgot. Hands of the Ripper. On the buses. Don't forget they did comedies as well. On the buses. And there's lovely sort of abstract caricatures. But it's great. It's great stuff, isn't it? On the bus is great. You, you, can, you can't make those sort of stories now. Those movies. That kind of um, humour. Sexist, racist. Oh, everything. There's a beautiful, beautiful poster. Twins of Evil. Look at that. Marvellous. I've just reviewed... Um, Oh God, Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Prince Kasim transformed into a baboon. When he's retransformed back again into Prince Kasim, it's him, Damien Thomas, there. And the luscious, the luscious twins there. Yes, we all know who they are. Yep, American Mont Sheets for Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. Valerie Leon. A film I always, always enjoy, but it has so many naff elements to it. The story itself is a real crazy stew of ideas that just, some of them don't gel. And great language shots in it, great set pieces, which don't really fit in with the rest of the movie and take you out of the story at large. But it's one of those things. The 70s for Hammer, it was hit and miss. I do love a lot of the stuff from the 70s. Especially here, this is an infamous one. This Vampire Circus that is one of their best movies, by the way. Does not get the credit it deserves. I will massively cover this at some point. I have one of those t shirts I mentioned before. I've got that poster on the t shirt, but it's too small. Have a look again. Can you spot anything weird about that? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I don't spot the weirdness either until you read about it here. It has phallic imagery all over it, apparently. And that would be, if you look here, there, there, and that's supposed to be a bit phallic as well, but, you know, until it gets pointed out to you, you're not going to notice that. I don't think so anyway. And I've got a very rude, innuendo-laden mind, so... I do love that. That's a great film. Dave Prowse is it again. The Tiger Woman. Oh my God. How have they got away with that? Shane Bryant and, oh, what's her name? Rita Tushingham, Straight On Till Morning. Very weird psychodrama, that one. Oh, quite unsettling. He kills her cat in it. For God's sake. Is it a cat or is it a puppy? It's a long time since I've seen it. Dracula, AD 1972. Caroline Monroe. And of course, one of the images from that is on the, the cover of this book, which is there. That one, that. I like that. That's a nice florid style. And that's, you can see that there on the cover. I need to get to some more here before I run out of time. Exactly, one of my favourite movies. From Hammer, Captain Cronus Vampire Hunter only gets that image there. And there are better images from that movie, better posters that I've seen. So I don't know why that, that's limited to just that. And also, Frankenstein and the Monsters from Hell, which I absolutely love for many of the same reasons. It's darker, it's more vivid, it's more nasty. But there's the poster there. But it's saddled with this on the other side of the double bill. And then you get the American One sheet down there, which is nice and moody and, you know, sort of gothic and forlorn. But that image itself is marvellous. Just want the full version of that, that image emblazoned across a full double page spread. Seven golden vampires there. Beautiful. 
Hammer meets the Shaw Brothers for a bit of chop socky vampirism. We do move on to Devil of Daughter, Man About the House. Great. You know, sex comedy is and that kind of thing. Wonderful. I mean, that's an A certificate sex comedy. Uh, the Lady Vanishes to Devil of Daughter. The failures that Hammer had at the very end. And then the, the book does go on to the Hammer revival. Let Me In, Wakewood, Wakewood's garbage. Let Me In is not a patch on the original version. The Resident, bloody awful. But then you get The Woman in Black, which I think was great. And that is a great picture there. That, that image there harkens back to the likes of uh, Roger Corman and his Edgar Allan Poe adaptations. That really looks like something like The House of Usher, doesn't it? It's such a brilliant or premature burial. Beautiful, that. Lovely image. I mean, there's a more modernistic take there, as you can see there. It's just the, yeah, the font and the logo don't look as good there, I don't think. And we finish with Woman in Black, Angel of Death, garbage, and The Quiet Ones, garbage. Uh, but this is a wonderful book, folks, celebrating wonderful artwork from a wonderful cinema. And take the, uh, the sleeve off and you have, look at that. Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. Yes. And on the back, the two faces of Dr. Jackal. Yeah. Or well, just one face of Dr. Jackal. Folks, you've reached the end. I recommend that book wholeheartedly. I recommend getting reproductions of Hammer posters or getting the originals if you can afford them. In the meantime, and the in-between time, please do keep it Celtic, keep it Celtic. I have been and always shall be killed, man. Please, be happy, be safe. And I'm going to see you all don't want to poke you in the eye. Don't, sorry. Later. It's hammer time. It's always hammer time.